Welcome in one and all sports money, the NFL prop shop. And I'm excited to be here with none other than Spenny Penny Bombs. Welcome to sports money, Spenny. Appreciate you taking the time out of your Friday to help with some props and a parlay. How's it going? Good, man. Good. You know, I always love doing this kind of stuff, getting them props in, getting that little plus monies, as uh, Sharpie always used to say with the boys there, a little plus money. So uh, we're trying to get some, you know, good plays and uh, some, some action going on here. And uh, yeah, if you want me to jump right into it, I can uh, get right into it with some of the stuff that uh, we got going on today and uh, we can get right into it. Let's do that. In fact, you guys, the game plan here is we're going to share two props each from the NFL card. The end of the show, we're going to give you a parlay between sides in totals that you can take to the bank for NFL Sunday. Uh, so again, we're shooting this Friday, September 13th, the Sunday, September 15th schedule NFL week two is upon us and Spenny penny bombs. The floor is yours. Open us up, my friend. I know you want to talk about a couple of big NFL games. I was excited to hear behind the scenes that we're a little bit synchronized here. So uh, the floor is yours, my friend. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's always nice to be on, you know, at least kind of the similar kind of areas with some of the some of the cappers that we love and especially with my guy Mike here. Uh, but yeah, a couple of spots that we're getting into this week uh, with the prop market. Uh, we're going to go first off to do the uh, Jets and Titans game. Uh, we're going to jump right into it with uh, Garrett Wilson over 69 and a half receiving yards at minus 110. Uh, and I do like a little bit of a sprinkle as well on the 75 plus receiving yards at plus 110. Uh, Wilson's been, you know, I think Wilson's just going to keep getting fed by Rogers. He's the guy, he's the main guy that he wants to you know, keep happy, keep, keep fed up in there in the, in the offense here. He got 11 targets last game. Uh, didn't do as much production with it as we would have thought. Uh, but I think here in a bounce back spot uh, in a game that should be, you know, decently tight. I think that the Titans can still keep it in a decent game here. And Rogers is going to have to throw the ball. Uh, last week, we saw, you know, a bunch of open, wide open receivers for the uh, Bears that were completely missed uh, by Caleb Williams. Uh, I just, his accuracy was awful last week. And I saw, you know, Allen and, and DJ Moore running buck wild, wide open with balls flying over their head that they're just looking like what the heck just happened. So. I think the Titans secondary is getting a little bit more credit uh, than they should in this game uh, or for even from last game. So I, I, I like Garrett Wilson uh, to start us off here with uh, with the uh, over 69 and a half and the 75 plus there. Oh, I love it. I, you know, especially considering the 11 targets and Aaron Rodgers wasn't even in that game for the fourth quarter. So they were that far out of that game. Uh, that number should only go up. I think it's a great look. And uh, I'll tell you what, here's another look I'm excited about. I'm going to go over to this Colts game. Take a little action in this Colts Green Bay Packers. And I can't believe it, but just a couple years ago, this guy was the number one gun across all of the NFL, the running game. And of course, you know, I want to pick on this Green Bay Packers defense, particularly. We saw last week what happened with Saquon Barkley lighting the world on fire with that Philadelphia Eagles coming off with three touchdowns. The Packers allow the fifth most rushing yards to the running back last season. And uh, we saw it only get worse just last game. As we look at this, Jonathan Taylor, anytime touchdown prop, I was surprised. I was blown away to see it was a plus 115. So I'm going to lock in Jonathan Taylor, anytime touchdown at plus 115. I'm going to put a sprinkle on that two plus touchdowns. Maybe he doesn't go three deep like Saquon did, but two plus at plus 750 just seems like it's too good of cash to, uh, to stay back on, Spenny. Go ahead, my friend. Let's talk. Let's talk some more. I like it. I like it. I like it. Especially the two touchdowns with 750. Like, you know, you can't go wrong, especially with Jonathan Taylor. You know, he's going to get some touches. Obviously, Richardson, you know, getting the, you know, toting the ball a little bit and trying to steal a little bit of the touchdowns. But I think they, they need to get, uh, you know, Jonathan Taylor working a little bit more. So I like that a lot for sure. Uh, but yeah, I want to jump into another spot here. <clears throat> it was uh, the uh, Cards and Rams game that we're looking into here. I do like a uh, kind of an outside receiver in this spot. Uh, uh, Puka's going to be out. Uh, we're not sure how long he's going to be out for, but uh, I like Demarcus Robinson. Uh, over 40 and a half receiving yards in this game. I got it at uh, minus 115. I like the 50 plus receiving yards as well as another double up spot at plus 125. Uh, you know, He's a, he's been a solid, you know, kind of third, you know, receiver for them. You're going to have to step up into a second spot here. Uh, you know, just a couple of little things with the, you know, some stats for him, you know, last year, even in the, 
last five games of the season. Even with uh, Cup and Puka, he was a he was a top twelve fantasy wide receiver. Uh, he's seeing ninety two percent snap share last week. Uh, so he's got the trust of Stafford and McVay. Uh, so I think that uh, a really good spot here is uh, Demarcus Robinson with the receiving yards, especially against that uh, uh, Cardinal secondary that uh, is, should be around the bottom of the league. I think it's like about 29th as it ranked uh, in uh, week one there. So I think that uh, the biggest spot for Robinson here. Oh, you know, what? that was the one that got me excited backstage talking a little bit about the parlay segment. So I can't wait to share that with you. I'm going to jump in. I'm going to take a little divisional battle opportunity here in the NFC East, the division you guys all know that I know. Pretty well. And as I'm looking at this one, kind of a, a, a overreaction spot, right? Week two tends to be a lot of this overreaction, um, whether it be sides, players, whatever the case may be. Uh, and I'm looking at the quarterback battle here, not with Daniel Jones and the New York Giants. In fact, I was surprised that this guy's making the money he is. He's thrown more interceptions to the other team than he has touchdowns to his own team. And they had to come out and announce that he will be their starter for week two. That's not where I'm trying to go with this one, though. I'm going to go on the other side to a little Jaden Daniels action. And I'm going to take his passing attempts over. The steam report came in, and this thing is getting gassed right now. So 27 and a half is the number to attempt or to grab out there. And I talk about the early overreaction. You know, we look at what happened last week with the um, uh, Minnesota Vikings. You know, all of a sudden, they look like Super Bowl contenders against that porous Giants defense. Uh, Sam Darnold, yeah. Sam Darnold is still in the game and he goes 19 for 24, just cut him up. Now the thing about that was only 24 pass attempts, but they were up 28, six in the third quarter. You don't keep throwing the ball in the air on the flip side. When you look at Jaden Daniels performance last week, um, you know, maybe not the finest debut that he was hoping for out there, but you know, he had what 20 pass attempts. He rushed the ball 16 times as well. And frankly, Tampa Bay dominated them. They were, they were so far out of the game that, my estimation is from a coaching perspective, you pull the playbook back. You don't show your divisional opponent in the New York Giants coming up what it is you're going to do. I expect over 27 and a half on his home field. Big game for this rookie to bounce back. And uh, it's a nice minus 120 spot out there. J Jaden Daniels over 27 and a half passing attempts. Uh, should be good money, Spenny. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. You know, I, I have a little... Uh, a sprinkle from the start of the season as a future for Jaden McDaniels, uh, sorry, Jaden Daniels as a, uh, a rookie of the year at plus 600. So, I, I you know, a good start for him. He, re he ran the ball well. It'd be nice to see him open up the throwing a little bit more. So, I'm definitely, you know, not opposed to seeing him. Uh, they open up the playbook against uh, the divisional rival here against the Giants for sure. Oh, I'm excited. There we go. We're intersecting again. I love to intersect with a guy here that is known for the bombs, and he's sharing a little nugget for you guys right there. We're going to turn to the portion of the NFL show here where we're going to give you guys a little parlay. We're going to put a little two-lagger together. We kind of talked in advance, and I'll tell you the odds are going to be a nice plus 281. So I wanted to give you guys a quick hit today for some NFL action you can go take to the bank on Sunday. And Spenny, why don't you talk about the first leg? Yeah, uh, jump in here with the first spot here. We're going to jump into a side. Uh, you know, get away from the props for a second here. We're just to do the main little uh, parlay here. And uh, I like San Fran minus five. Uh, you know, I just think this is a bounce back spot from last year when they lost to Minnesota in a, in a game that they, you know, obviously shouldn't have lost there. Uh, you know, this is a, you know, a good spot here with it. They had, didn't have Trent Williams last year. They're going to have Trent again this year. Uh, I still think that, you know, even if McCaffrey plays or not, Jordan Mason looked good enough last week for them to be able to take care of business here. Uh, I, again, it was, you said Darnold earlier, we we're talking about Darnold, uh, a guy that said he was seeing ghosts, you know, earlier in his career. I, you know, he just came over from San Fran last year. They already know what he's got. Uh, I think that uh, San Fran's going to take care of business here and, uh, and get it done against uh, Minnesota. I like it. I like it. Leg number two for this two leg parlay. I'm going to go to a side as well. I teased the early reaction here in the NFL and we're looking at week two and I'm looking at a spot where the LA Rams are taking on the Arizona Cardinals. And I'm not a Kyler Murray fan. You know, he's on and off the injury report on a regular basis. The spot that I'm going to take advantage of here is a money line play on these LA Rams. In fact, we see 37% of the bets on the Rams, but 90% of the cash. So big money loves this plus money spot. And as do I, again, early re overreactions, potentially the Rams had a lot to overcome. You talked about Aaron Darnold, uh, the retirement factors. You talk about some things like, you know, Higby, Nakua. I mean, Cooper Cup got 21 targets last week. 
Uh, they were battled, though. They didn't give up. They battled back, and they went to overtime. If it wasn't for David Montgomery going to beast mode, uh, they very much had a shot to go out there and win that game. And on the flip side of things, Kyler Murray, uh, man, the Cardinals have absolutely one of the worst defenses in the league. They're not going to help him out. Uh, and we see that, you know, the defense from the Rams side of things was able to keep guys like Amon St. Brown and Sam Laporta in check. So I think that's a bad recipe here. I think the Rams show that they are still a contender. They're going to overcome the adversity of the injuries that they have. And that'll be the second leg. Parlay those two pieces together. You guys are going to catch yourself some nice plus 281. There we go, Spenny. We got four props, two plays, one parlay, all inside of 10 minutes, my friend. You're the best in the business with the prop game. It means a lot that uh, you spent some time with me this evening. What's going on? Where can people find you? Yeah, man, I appreciate you having me and to come out and uh, do this little prop show with you. You know, anytime I'm always available. I love doing this kind of stuff. We love having these props. We love getting, like we said, a little plus monies, you know, get a little action on there. So jump in, you know, get that parlay with us and jump on some of these props. Uh, you can catch me at uh, X or Twitter, whatever you still call it, at uh, Panagy underscore eight. And uh, I'll usually be around uh, with, uh, you know, NFL Pub Hub with uh, the boys at Pub Sports Radio as well, uh, you know, on the weekends and some of those live shows. So catch me there as well. I oh, appreciate you, brother. Have yourself a great weekend. Good luck. Get that cash. And thanks as always, my friend. We'll see you soon.